the Norwegian Research Group of the Institute of Marine Research, which included Russian representatives from the Federal Hydrometeorological Service, recorded a radiation background norm near the sunken nuclear submarine Komsomolets in the Norwegian Sea in 100,000 times, and in the area of the ventilation pipe of the reactor compartment in 800,000 times. Before I get to the topic of the video, I want to thank everyone who subscribed to my new Visioner History channel. There I post very interesting and shocking videos on interesting topics. The link to the channel is in the description and in the upper right corner. Well, we continue. So far, it does not pose a threat, the report said, but the submarine lying on the bottom requires constant monitoring. The media made loud headlines, stirring up interest in the topic of Arctic contamination. Is there a lot of radioactive waste in the waters of the Kara and Barents Seas, and what is the threat? For Russia, such stories are a never-ending headache. Everyone who claims rights to the Arctic riches closely monitors the environmental situation in the region and uses it for attacks, conflicts, and maintaining the necessary degree of tension. The Soviet past says, many claims of environmentalists are well-founded. From the mid-1960s to the late 1980s the USSR buried more than 17,000 objects with spent nuclear fuel in the waters of the Barents and Kara Seas. There are also the remains of three submarines buried in the Arctic Ocean. Russia often has nothing to object to, except to point out that it is not alone in having such burial sites. Twelve other countries, including the United States, the United Kingdom, France, Belgium, Japan, and New Zealand, have dumped radioactive waste, RW, in 47 areas of the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. Like the USSR, it was mostly spent fuel from nuclear power plants. Such practices stopped only in 1993, when the parties to the London Convention for the Protection of the Seas from Pollution adopted a ban on the disposal of raw near the marine environment. Waste disposal can cost enormous sums, and the country has more pressing problems to spend budgets on. Even the latest expeditions of Kurchatov Institute staff to nuclear burial sites in 2012 were funded by the Ministry of Emergency Situations. According to this and past studies conducted in 2003-2007, Russia has 14 burial sites to its credit. In six of them scientists provide only an approximate volume of submerged waste. The total area of such nuclear dumps is 203,000 square meters. For comparison, the garbage at the well-known dump Udrobo near Moscow occupies 16 hectares or 160,000 square meters. At the same time, the landfill contains various wastes, and only radioactive fuel is in the sea. The sunken submarine Komsomolets, on which Norwegian scientists have now discovered radiation leaks, is not the only nuclear dump in the Arctic. Used nuclear reactors are also stored in seawaters. Mainly they are engines of used submarines and ships. The first such reactors, six, were sunk in the Abrasimov Bay in 1965-66. In the Kara Sea in 1972 one of the reactors was submerged on a barge and sunk together with it. Two more reactors have been lying in Stepovoy Bay since 1981, one of them a prototype with a liquid metal coolant. Apparently, Soviet scientists ran it on stands, but for some reason they refused to install it on a real boat and soon disposed of it. Its remains lie just 50 meters from the surface of the water. The last two reactors from the submarines were sunk in Current Bay in 1988. Worn-out containers for transporting radioactive elements, as well as three reactors from the nuclear icebreaker Lenin Rest in Savolki Bay. It was the first icebreaker with a nuclear unit. In 1965 the ship allowed the reactor core to dehydrate and the walls melted. The damaged reactor parts were unloaded and immediately lowered into the water on the pressurized ship. A year later the reactor itself was scrapped there. Another dramatic story happened to this icebreaker, in 1967 the cooling system leaked, which they hastily tried to fix with jackhammers to prevent radioactive waste from spilling out. As a result of this harsh procedure, the reactor became inoperable. It was decided to cut it out of the hull of the Lenin and drown it along with 3,500 tons of radioactive waste. The engine was blown up together with the bottom which was successfully welded. The icebreaker was towed to the dock to put two reactors on it instead of one. Later, the reactor was replaced once more, but normally, the engine was also disposed of at sea. All in all, there are 14 reactors on the ocean floor. 
The Kerchedov Institute has praised the robustness of the pressurized tanks used by the Soviet Union to bury waste. The probability of a leak is minimal for the next hundreds of years. The only problem is that not all the waste dumps are mapped, some of them have only documents on their disposal, but no coordinates, so it is impossible to find out their condition. Mikhail Flint, deputy director of the Institute of Oceanology of the Russian Academy of Sciences, believes that this may become a problem in the future. We took samples, and the sediments showed only slight excesses in relation to the background level of radioactivity in the bottom part of the Kara Sea. The facts give confidence to say that the burials were made with a high degree of strength. The changing climate points to another angle of the problem. Radiation burials can be disturbed not only by natural forces, but also as a result of anthropogenic activity. Let us imagine that the Kara Sea is freed from ice under the influence of global warming, and people rush to develop supergiant deposits of hydrocarbons. It is necessary to have an exact data on the areas, which are to be tabooed. According to the unofficial data, the reserves of deposits near the burial grounds are 3-5 trillion cubic meters of gas and gas condensate. This is one of the raw materials safety cushions of the country. Once again, the economy is turning against ecology. Underwater surprises. But if everything is clear with burial sites, then everything is not so simple with submarines that have crashed. Now in the Northern Seas lie already mentioned nuclear submarine K-278 Komsomolets, submarines K-159 and K-27. Very little is known about each of them. K-27 was the first to be sunk, in 1982. Everything was not smooth with it at the stage of design. Its advantage over the others was the compactness of the reactor with a rapid power buildup. In 1959 there were two accidents at the test bench, people were exposed to high doses of radiation. Production was going to be curtailed, but then the Americans released their submarine Seawolf, which, by the way, is also now sunk 80 kilometers from the Californian coast, and the country's leadership hurried up with the delivery of the project. The characteristics of the boat were underestimated, so it didn't turn out well, and it was launched in 1962. In the first voyage the problems with the reactor started from the rapidly worn-out cooling mechanism, the second voyage took place only in 1965. K-27 faced problems practically in every voyage. There was a fire, inexplicable decrease of power, oxidation of alloys, and penetration of liquid metals into the gas chambers. Each time the sailors received radiation doses. On her last voyage, the boat left the ship repair dock for a performance check in 1968. An hour later, a massive radiation release occurred, with 144 crew members receiving doses of up to 1,000 X-rays. They brought the boat to the docks, but on the way nine people died and the average life expectancy of the remaining sailors was 50 years. The boat sat on the dock for 20 years until it was sunk. If officers were warned that for five years they, preferably, should not have children, no one told us that. No certificates, no documents. Each of us was given a receipt, for 25 to 30 years we agreed to keep silent, not to reveal military secrets to anyone. This deprived almost all enlisted men of the opportunity to undergo a basic medical examination, given what had happened on the ship. If the officers were to undergo treatment every six months, the rest of the men who demobilized left for the big Soviet country to fend for themselves and die quietly, said Vyacheslav Mazarenko, chief petty officer of the submarine, in an interview with the BBC. The sinking of the submarine K-278 is one of those types of catastrophes, when they say it happened. Because till now the designers blame the Navy for incompetence of the sailors and the Navy authorities blame the scientists for imperfection of technologies, while the real state of affairs on that ill-fated day could not be established. The accident happened in April 1989. Hydraulic fluid leaked onto the instrument panel, resulting in a fire that was not extinguished in time. The compartments decided to blow out the smoke, which only resulted in a fire that began to cause the pipes to burst. The boat managed to surface from a depth of 1,800 meters. 30 of the 60 survivors remained in the cold water for over an hour before they were rescued by the buoy Alexei Klobistov. After that, the boat sank in the waters near Norway. The Norwegian government raised a scandal, but against the background of the collapse of the Soviet Union it did not make sense. The political part of the issue was dropped, 
and joint surveys of the hull began. Until 1998, seven expeditions were conducted to seal the hull of the submarine, which was carrying two nuclear torpedoes. Since the reactor was not damaged, it is in a sealed shutdown condition, it is from it that no leaks have been registered. The only problem is with the torpedoes, they give increased radiation background to the silt settled around the iron sarcophagus. At the beginning of the century, four more surveys were carried out, each time excesses of the background were registered. But lifting the boat or torpedoes is a costly and senselessly risky endeavor. However, in 50 years something will have to be done, since the hull can finally decay. The state of the boat and the picture on the echo sounding data. The submarine K-159 kit was the mainstay of the Soviet submarine fleet. The class of these submarines has 10 series, which speaks of a successful initial project. After the collapse of the Soviet Union submarines were considered obsolete and rarely went to sea. The nuclear submarine K-159 stood in Gremica for more than 14 years until it sank in 2003. This trip should have been her last anyway, the submarine was towed with cables to Sivirat Vinsk to be dismantled and scrapped. But two days after leaving the port, the cables broke during the storm and the submarine began to sink. According to court records, Captain Sergei Zemchuznov twice repeated the order to evacuate while on the tugboat, but the crew did not listen to the commander. Water was flooding the compartments, and the crew continued to believe they would save the ship. There were 10 crew members aboard, 9 of whom died. In the pitch black of a northern night, helicopters searched for survivors, finding only two bodies and Staff Lieutenant Maxim Sibelsky. The boat had gone underwater 238 meters, with an open hatch and several holes. There was no one else to blame for the deaths of the sailors, except the responsible Captain Zemchuzny. He was found guilty, but then the verdict was overturned for lack of corpus delicti and he served three years instead of the four years the first sentence was handed down. The whole course of events developed in me an extremely negative attitude towards service under the command of people who do not have their own point of view or are afraid to admit their mistakes, shifting all responsibility on the shoulders of their subordinates. My ultimate goal is to be discharged from the ranks of the Russian armed forces, Sergei Zemchuzny wrote in an explanation to his appeal. The commander of the Northern Fleet, Admiral Gennady Suchkov, was removed from service. It is not surprising, when the headquarters was informed about the accident, they did not even know how many people were on the submarine and what was its route. According to data of Kerchatov Institute the nuclear submarine kit poses the highest potential danger of radioactive contamination. The nuclear engine is not protected or sealed, there are no barriers between it and the water. But it was not switched on during the whole trip so so far no leaks have been registered. The research teams lost funding for several years and had to leave waste monitoring due to paperwork. The new monitoring is now rescheduled as part of state programs to develop the Arctic. The researchers are waiting for 2020, when all the formal procedures will be passed and the institute will receive the money. At least, this is already a federal program, structured and targeted. Maybe someday they will get to the programs on water wealth purification. But right now there is not even such an agenda. I thank you for watching. Your support is very important to me. Your comments and thumbs up motivate me to release new videos on interesting topics. Subscribe and turn on notifications. See you in the new videos.